the content that you deliver. So thank you very much for everyone for turning up to uh, five key strategies to amplify your personal brand authority and engage more value clients. The thank you for all those that have put in information about what you're hoping to get out of this particular virtual event and if you haven't done so yet, can you just pop it in the chat? And it really helps me to know, make sure I cover things. And, and what I also suggested is at the end of each segment that you, if you've got a questions, save it up throughout that component. And then I will answer questions. I want it to be fairly interactive because if you've got a question and there's something that you have been thinking that you want answers to, I'm sure somebody else has as well. So let's get started and welcome to those that have just come on also. The, okay, that there's a lot of reasons that I find that people don't put themselves out there. You know, they're not, look at me, I am the front of my brand. And what we're going to be talking about is your personal brand and how to amplify that. And these are the reasons that I have seen pe uh, people have told me. There's just this fear of judgment. I mean, who are you? Or who am I to think that I am the person that's an expert in this particular field? I mean, I'm just a single operator. And really, I, you know, the biggest judgment you have is usually of yourself but there's that fear of judgment that holds people back and I know I work with people all the time and that is the main one that comes up I've and, and the other one that comes up is they not what have I got I haven't got anything relevant to say but they're and not culturally acceptable I work with a lot of people from different cultures and that's what a big reason for not putting yourself out there again is especially if, for women in from Asian backgrounds, it's just not culturally acceptable to do that. You do not do it because people are going to judge you. That lack of confidence, I'm not confident in front of the camera. I'm not confident with the words I have to say. Again, some of the people I work with who English is not first language is, well, what if I stuff it up? And so they just don't do anything. Privacy concerns, that's a, that's a big one. But, you know, anyone that's done anything online, if you're if you're out there online, there's a there's a very good chance that everyone knows your stuff anyway. I mean, as soon as you tap something with a credit card, there's a lack of privacy there because that information goes somewhere and says that you've been eating too much dominoes. The privacy concerns I would not be concerned about unless you I'm working with a client that is a security officer or a military police officer now she has major privacy concerns so we've got to work on other ways to build her personal brand without showing who she is it's quite a trick that one the other one that what I was talking about that perceived lack of relevance what have I got to say about my topic that's going to be interesting or how can I do that five days a week? You know, I don't have that much content. I was working with a client the other day and we spent a couple of hours really nutting down all, all her story. And I, I took you know, like four pages of notes and then went back with over 60 different content pieces and the relevance of those content pieces to what she does. What happens is, is you don't necessarily not recognize the importance of what you do that there's, it's, you don't see it or hear it. And once people start telling me things, I hear what you're saying. It's already your words. It's just that we tend not to do that well for ourselves. And the last one is time constraints. I haven't got time. The, you know, where will I spend my time? Is this important for me to do this? I've got other things that I need to address. And that's such an important factor. And setting the goals to know what you want to do and how you want to do it is really important and do some planning to make sure that time is not something that's going to hold you back. There's a heap of benefits that you will achieve if you do put yourself out in front. You, you definitely build that 
trust and loyalty. People get to know you so that they they will trust you. And yeah, I've seen that person around a lot before. They are a real person. And I know Steve did some training on LinkedIn the other day and it was, you know, how many fake profiles are out there. We really need to make sure that the person is real. Increase visibility and recognition. I mean, that's a bit of a, a given then if you're putting yourself out there. The you you stand out from your competitors who aren't doing what you're doing. And I think that's a really big thing to remember is exactly that, is that you want to be able to stand out. And so you're the one that's noticed and identified as what you do. You definitely have greater control over your brand messaging if you're putting the message out as opposed to maybe what others might be saying about you. Opportunity for direct engagement. It Again, it's you in front of your brand. You're selling the the point you're selling the story and increase referrals and networking opportunities that becomes a given when you're seen as an authority in your field so pretty good reasons hey for sharing your your brand your content everything that you need to be doing to putting yourself out there it's really worthwhile to be doing it regularly and doing it all the time for those that have just that arrived a little bit later, if you can pop in the chat the reasons that you're here and what you hope to get out of it so I can have a little bit of a review through and see that, make sure that I cover the things. And then at the end of each section, so if you've got any questions, there's five different components in here. What I want you to do is to save up the questions and then I might answer it in the meantime or not. Uh, please ask and join in. I'm not going to be selling you anything at the end. So you don't have to sort of rush off and go, oh, my gosh, she's going to try and sell me something because that's what usually you do on these webinars. It's what I'm going to do is ask you to do something. That's all. It's just to make an appointment with me. And so it's it's nice and simple. So relax. I'm going to just give you information, give you ideas about what you can do to be able to put yourself out there in front of your brain. And the other thing is that you are seen as the expert. If you are the one out in front saying, hey, I know how to do this and, and you know, ways that you can do that to demonstrate it. The, a little bit about me, there's some a couple of people on here that, that know me a bit, but not know a whole lot about me. I have had a really interesting work history I taught aerobics for 10 years and so I love that component of, of being healthy and well and fit and, and energetic and still place emphasis because it doesn't matter what you're doing in business, you need to you need to be able to cope with everything you're doing and whatever fitness looks like for you, then I encourage people to do it and eat healthfully. As I said to some of those that got on early, I'm glad I bought some chockies for trick or treat tonight and I'm glad a big group came through because I know I would have eaten all those extra chocolates that were left over. But for me, I've written a, uh, two books. One's called Being Unstoppable and the other one is Good Girls Do Sell. And for those that stay on to the end, I will, I'm just making sure nobody's jumped on that I have missed, that that I will give you a, a soft copy of uh, either one of those books. Or when we get to the end, I want you to let me know which one you would like to read. I have presented on stages around the world and have talk to thousands of people in audiences, depending on what I put my hand up for. I've had the We Are Women podcast for the last 10 years and have had the opportunity to in newspaper articles, work with some of the top boys in town, and also was asked by Koshi's Business Builders to contribute some articles on sales. Then my background after aerobics, I became GM of sales for a multi-million dollar company for 20 years. I started as a rep, took the sales in that area to from zero they had a rep in the area and when he left they found all the it was took in part of Doombin and Eagle Farm and they found all these betting slips in the car that he actually hadn't been doing much work he obviously had been off to the track most days so I took that really from zero to over four hundred thousand dollars in sales in two years with and and that way of doing that was knocking on doors and asking for business. So I've done I I've worked at the coalface. I know what it takes. When I shifted into the GM role, I had I've been I was had studied management and that was an opportunity that came up. 
and I secured every single mining company in the Bowen Basin. And I was selling first aid supplies, safety equipment, um, some rehab stuff. But it was, you know, millions of dollars. And yet through GFC, we went from $3 million to $10 million in sales through the GFC. So the, all of the components that I had learnt through that and now for the last, I've had Speech Perfect since 2017 and moved into it full-time, uh, 2007, and moved into it full-time in 2018 and worked with hundreds of clients individually, often one-on-one -on, -one or group training sessions with them on a wide range of topics and just sort of tapping into the knowledge and experience that I've had and the success across the, the range, whether it's just been now someone's got confidence to go out and talk about themselves or it's the ability, you know, that increased income. One of the clients I work with just to help her write blogs and set up a LinkedIn profile increased the, they had measurable increase of 30% of inquiries into the legal firm that she worked with. So there's lots of, you know, there's lots of experience across lots of industries. And I really want to share a, a few of those ideas with you tonight. Okay. The, and if I'm looking sideways, it's just at the other screen, making sure that I haven't missed someone coming in. What we're going to be covering tonight is these five points. And this is where I said, if I, as I finish each one or start the next one, if you've got a question, please ask. We're going to be talking about how to get very clear on what you want to achieve and how you're going to achieve it. How do you build connection? And then how do you build a community of loyal fans? The I think the most important C out of anything that you do anywhere, anytime is consistency. As I talked about, even about fitness or health, whatever you're doing, just being really consistent in it and building great habits and a competitive edge, what sets you apart. So they're the points we're going to, to look at. This will pop up again at the end. If you're taking notes, all of these three points will come up as we go through. So the first one is clarity. And the points we're going to discuss is defining your goals. How do you know your customer and develop a USP? So again, there's a lot of content here. So we're going to cover, a, 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 so what you'll find in each part, there'll be one major slide with content. If you want to take a photo, very happy for you to do exactly that. The rest will be me talking. So there, I, I want you to write in a yes or no in the chat is, is, if you write goals or not. Now, there's a couple of people that I work with on a monthly basis on the, on here. And if they don't write yes, they'll, they'll, they'll get a slap. Won't they, Faisy? They <laughs> Absolutely. So these are written goals. So they're goals. And I don't know whether you decide that January 1st is a good time to write them or you do it whenever suits you. But it's not just goals that you have thought about because they're just a wish but goals that you've written down, all right? We've got to work on that, clear. Because when we set goals, it, it really does give you that clarity of why you're doing what you're doing. I run a, every January, I run a half-day goal-setting workshop and we really nut it down to get your vision statement and your mission statement very, very clear. Because once you've got those components clear, then the goals form from there. And every time you're getting up and doing what you're doing, nothing's a hassle because you are always working towards that vision that you have. And for me, my vision is to enable people to do what they don't believe is possible. That's it. That's as simple as that is. And that's what I do is help people write simple visions and mission statements so that for me, enabling people to do what they don't believe is possible, it, it, that means I'm not saying I specifically teach this. I have a wide range of things that I help people with, but it is that I, I don't have um, any issues with the enthusiasm or the motivation to do it because it's what makes it's what makes me get up each morning. So it's so important to write and build your goals. You may have heard of the the Harvard study where they studied the 100% the of students and 83% of the students did not even set goals once they graduated. And 14% had a plan, but they didn't write their goals down. What they found was those 14% were 10% more successful 
uh, than the 83% because they at least had a bit of a plan of what they wanted to do. And that left only 3% who had wrote their goals down and they were 10 times more successful than the 15, 14%. It really does make a difference of writing goals down. And I teach people to write them down in a create formula. You may have worked with a smart formula in the past. Uh, creates a little bit different. It's clear, realistic, ecological. That's a big difference for than the smart goals. Is it good for you? Is it good for your family? Is it good for the environment? It, you're writing it as now towards what you want. And the other one that makes a bit of difference is the E on the end, which is what evidence do you have that you've achieved those goals? And if you're getting on a plane, you booked a trip, or do you just need the plane tickets in your hand, have it booked, whatever that looks like for you. But the important factor here is to make sure that you start writing goals and to write them to a formula means that you'll even be more achievable. The What surprise for your client? This To figure this out, we could spend the next three or four hours working with each one of you individually to go, what's the prize your, your clients receive from you? The thing is with most people, they you've solved the problem yourself so you don't understand where your best client prospect is coming from because it's not your problem any longer, but it's their problem. So really nutting it down. And for anyone that's worked with me will know that I will constantly say what they'll say that's a problem. So, and I was working with someone yesterday and I'm trying to think what they were saying that it's um, yeah, the business isn't making much as much money. I was, I was doing a mentoring for growth thing with the government yesterday and, and we were with this, with this client, with this mentee and she was talking about the problems with middle management and that it's a problem for senior management. And it was, you know, bottom line stuff, which is important. But for the senior manager, it's just that he doesn't want people coming and whinging at his door every day. You know, the price for him to train his staff is to stop people complaining. The, it's really nutting it right down to go, what is the benefit of somebody working with you? And, and it, I, I, when I worked with my sales team when I was in the first day, I, I would dig down 12 questions to eventually figure out what the prize is. It's so important to do it. So what is the prize? Think about that. It's probably the most important sales conversation for any of your marketing you will ever do is knowing what the prize is. When we're doing anything, this is what we want to be. We want to be the blue butterf butterfly in amongst all of the orange ones. We want to be able to stand out. I threw this in because I just love this picture. The But we want to be the one that's just a little bit different than everyone else doing what we're doing. And how are we going to do it? Well, well then we need to have something that makes us unique, a unique selling proposition. Because what we have is what customers want, what you do well, and then in the middle of that is your unique selling proposition. So again, that becomes part of what the prize is, figuring out how what makes you unique. And, and again, it takes a process to, to do that. One of the simplest ways that you can do it is go to your, your Google business. If you don't have a Google business, we need to talk seriously. Go to your Google business and look at your reviews and see what someone else has written about you because that makes you, you unique. Janine's guidance is a game changer. Would I say that about myself? I can do that in the third person, but it's certainly that this one says ability to communicate complex ideas in an accessible way is commendable. So I can use that as something that makes me unique. It's just one technique to find out to figure out what is your unique selling proposition. Because I think that's where a lot of people get held up. If you get held up on that USP, just pop a yes in the in the in the chat. If that goes, well, what is me? What what about is it about me that is unique? There's not so many other people doing what I'm doing. And it's usually not just the tech technician part. So if anyone got any questions now that we've finished that first section at all. You can open the mics for the questions if you got anything. Any comments at all? Welcome to those that have arrived since then. People have popped in the chat. Thanks, Steve. 
that popped in the chat why that what they want to get out of tonight so if you can do that as well that would be would be excellent so figuring out what makes you unique no questions in that component i must have given so much thorough information that nobody needs it let's go on second part is con connection talking about listening actively building trust and connecting through stories Active listening is probably the hardest thing that I had to learn to do was, was to shut up and pay attention to what people were saying, but really listen with listen without bias, listen without trying to solve the problem automatically. Because when you can solve it, that's what you're doing straight away. You're going, oh, I've got this solved for you. And people don't need to know that or hear that straight up. Active listening is truly paying attention to what people are saying and not trying to fix the problem. The way I've trained myself to actively listen is I do not travel anywhere without a book in, in the car or I do not go walking without a, a book in my ear. And when I first started doing it, it was, I used to go out to all the mining companies and I would, I'd be driving for hours out through Bowen Basin area and and I sort of realised after an hour I hadn't heard anything in the book. Can anyone else relate to that? You sort of go, oh, uh, I know I was listening to something. And then I started training myself to listen better. And what happened then is I'd pull up after two hours of driving, I'd sit in the car park of the mine and continue listening to the book because it was so interesting. It's, uh, but it, it taught me to really listen actively and it has improved a whole lot of skills in doing that. And so it does, it improves communication. People know that you're listening well. People know when you're half distracted and you're not listening. It's such an important aspect to practice is to listen actively. And it'll definitely help you build trust when people know that you really do care and you're paying attention to them, which is important. Uh, some of the ways that I have built trust over the over the last you know 17 years in business is I collect testimonials. So you'll find a whole lot of these up on my YouTube channel and then people talking about different workshop courses or how they've worked with me and what they've got out of it. So that's something if you're not doing that, you need to be doing that and getting, putting it across in different places where people can see it. Another way that you can build trust is you get on other people's podcasts and show that your level of expertise on the podcast. I think I've had probably a dozen external podcast interviews this year, as well as my We Are Women podcast and me inviting guests and then them sharing that because I speak to a lot of international people as sharing those across the world. But getting on other people's podcasts is such a great way to build trust. The And again, so with my We Are Women podcast, we've had over 20 uh, 25,000 downloads and uh, there's not 253 episodes. I do a lot of one minute things as well. There's 175 episodes, I think at the moment of 167 live, but the rest are recorded. So that's another way, expert. I, I was doing podcasts before podcasts became a thing. The Your business page, getting five-star reviews, asking for five-star reviews is so important. If, you, if you're like me, when you go and check out any anyone or anything, you, go, you look up their business and you look, read through their reviews. And if you're if you're and people will do exactly the same thing for you if you don't have a, a google business page you absolutely need to set it up because that's how people will find you in this era it's i'm talking about building your personal brands and doing things going out but i i don't know about you i google things i want and people need to be able to find you because it's when somebody wants something that they'll go looking for it. And all of these components that's making you stand out is going to be the thing that pops you up in front of people. That's why it's absolutely critical. Uh, this is uh, LinkedIn. It's only 492. I usually get about eight or 900 a week, but, you know, a great, a few followers and profile views. This is the one that that I thought was great, 372 profile views and 182 search appearances this week. So it, that's all, but it, 
I'm, I'm doing all of it because I've set it all up. You can't jump in and do everything unless you, you need assistance to do it and know what to prioritise for your business. That's the important factor. But you need to get out there so that you can be found by the person who's Googling and searching. Another way to stand out is to win awards. And I won 2023, won Logan City Business to Business Award for Small Business. And then this year was BX Coaching Women Award as well. So entering awards is such an important factor. That's a that's a start. The, the amount of times I've, I've been finalists in a whole lot of, and even finalists, people actually can't differentiate between a finalist and a winner. So entering and becoming finalists, get yourself out there. If you search, you know, you search my name, these awards will come up as well as uh, other parts of my media. And the third part of this is, is how to tell engaging stories. This is something that I... You know, it, it's my thing. I absolutely love helping people who say they don't have a story. Everyone has a story. Absolutely everyone has a story. It's just that you don't hear it, but I can hear it when you tell it. I run a retreat once a year with a stylist and a photographer, and that's a, um, for women, it's a personal branding retreat. And what I do is I give people a formula to spend a day and we, we write stories and then I edit it and we create this storybook with beautiful images and everyone's having a wonderful time looking fantastic. But And people are, bless me with what they share in those stories. And I, some of the content is not necessary, but the, the essence of the content is necessary. And that's what's important when you're telling stories is finding that essence of the story. So you need to know your audience. You need to align your stories with your brand. Uh, incorporate elements of good storytelling. And that's part of uh, the public speaking training that I do is how do you deliver that story and how do you deliver the message so it's, it becomes interesting and engaging, particularly with your voice and vocal control, pause, face pause, pitch, projection. And I'm trying to think of the last thing, pause, pace, pitch, projection, and tone, the tone of your voice. It might just be a nice soft tone. Or you want to get excited about something. Use real success stories. People are interested in those. And make it visual. And again, I'll, uh, something I say all the time, what does that look like? So you create the image so people flow with you, but you also want to add that emotional connection. And this is what's going to set us about, as part from AI, Steve, is the emotional connection. AI cannot do emotion. It is up to us to create that. And that's who what people want to deal with. What I'm finding for me personally, and I mentioned this to a couple of people on here the, the other day, is that... I had um, someone say to me exactly that. They work in AI and they want to work with me because they want their clients to be able to tell their messages, uh, their, their investors to be able to tell their messages with that emotional connection built into it. It's so important to be able to deliver that, that component. And, and knowing how when you're telling a story to keep it really simple and focused and not sort of go off on any tangents. If you've been paying attention with what I've been delivering so far, you'll probably find I've told well over maybe a dozen stories already. They're tiny little components and they are, they're relevant to what I'm talking about and they just sort of keep dropping them in everywhere. And that's all you need to be doing. They're not great big you know, I fell out of an aeroplane, broke my legs or something type story. They're stories that are relevant to what we do and how we help people. And incorporate a call to action if you can do that as well. It's such an important factor. What do you want people to do with that story? Any questions following that second section there? I've had a couple people drop out and come back on again. And I'm hopefully I haven't, you didn't miss too much when that happened. So any questions in that second section about building that from we've gone from clarity to connection and then talking about community? Janelle. Janine Susan, Casey. Oh, sorry, Janine. Susan, <laughs> sorry for that. Susan is asking that she says it's really quiet. So it, is she not hearing what you're saying? I just noticed a message on the chat she's oh, okay. 
can she said she makes okay? you believe. Yeah, where I can. Yeah, Susan, you may have to just check your your audio and to see if there's something happening because if everyone else can hear, it's uh, it may be to do with your audio. Thank you, everyone else. Okay, the third component we're talking about is community and we want to figure out how to be seen and different ways to do that. How can we give value and then build a trial of loyal supporters? When I start working with people who are um, starting out in business or even been doing it for a while but have really never done a lot when it comes to any social media or digital marketing, they they look at what's out there because someone will say to them, you should do this, you should do this, you should do this. And then they it's, it's all overwhelming. So you know what happens? They don't do anything. And making sure that you do something is important. So figuring out where your clients are is the first most important aspect and putting some time and effort into it. Also being aware of where people who would, may refer you might be or how you want to get seen and how you cross-purpose your content right across all the different platforms. We don't want to be creating all these multiple blogs and they're only used once we want to be able to use them elsewhere as i said those one minute videos so those one minute business bite videos uh, they go as an audio on my podcast they are on my youtube channel i have i do have a va that works for me a few hours every week and she posts them right across all the different platforms that i use on diff different days those recordings and then i put them across other other social media platforms through the week so that one recording it has a it's a, a permanent life on it because then we you know may reuse it again in the future and and make the the thumbnail look a bit different a little bit pretty and but we're constantly using things so you don't want to be creating things once you want to be make sure that you're using them over and over again so these are some of the things I do and I don't expect anyone else to be doing as much as this it would exhaust people I'm sure but this has been built up and it's part of just this little social networking butterfly that I I love to be so I run a women's mastermind group which is a once a month group I host three meetup channels and connect with people that way I am a mem been a member of Power Talk Australia for the last 20 years I'm in three clubs and on to three boards and I'm also to their marketing be Connected Networking Group is another networking group that I am part of as well. Um, I'm trying to get to meetings, mostly online. I am a member of BX Networking, which I know a couple of people on here are also a member of BX. And I go to different club meetings once once a week. I'm on the chamber of the Logan Chamber, uh, on the committee for the Logan Chamber of Commerce, and we meet once um, once a month. Um, Park Ridge Biz Connect, it's been part of that for quite a number of years and they have meetings occasionally. Logan City Women in Business, I'm on the committee, the organising committee for that also. They meet once a month on a Thursday and I attend the Bayside Women in Business meetings as well. So that's it. For people who say, I see you everywhere, well, that's the reason because I do go everywhere. I don't expect, you know, everyone to do to do that, but you have to be out to be seen. That's uh, that's such an important factor. Who, where is your tribe? How how do you, you know, if I'm going to Bayside Women, it's a very different group than, say, if I'm going to the Chamber of Commerce, it's a different space, a different group of people, a different type of client base. So where are your clients and where do you want to put your energy and time? And is networking the best thing for you to do is another question. I've got some information on networking coming up, whether that works for you or not. But figuring out where you can be seen and, and turning up, that's such an important factor. So many people I know join groups and then don't turn up. We get busy. Well, that's not going to help building your personal profile. The, the you know the couple of hours you might put into that a week you don't know where that comes from I love the ripple effect you don't know where business comes from 
Oh, well, yeah, I did have things on networking. So the benefits of networking is opportunity for discovery, meeting new people. It is knowledge and insights. Most of networking events have somebody doing some training and offering great insights into different topics. For those that are looking for positions, there are networking events that really do help them with the career advancement, increased visibility. That's a bit of a given, isn't it, if you're out doing things. Enhanced professional relationships. It's really interesting. Some of the people that I've connected with over the years and some have become a lot have become clients, but a, a lot of others have, have built with joint ventures and, and uh, built great relationships with them. And for your own personal growth, you know, to get out and challenge yourself, especially if you're feeling uncomfortable. One challenge for everyone on here, I want to challenge you with this, is for the month of November, which starts tomorrow, for the whole month, every single day, do something that makes you uncomfortable. Just something, just one little thing for the month of November. Because then you'll find that whatever you thought was a comfort zone becomes much broader because you've done something that you were uncomfortable. So just take a note of that if you don't mind. Um, you like keeping busy. I'm sorry, I'm just reading that. It's, it's quiet in here. Is that your note taker, Steve? It's like dropping me messages. I think that yeah, was the note taker. It must, be, it must have been the note taker. I'm not sure why it's doing that. I think that was Susan's note taker too. It's exactly the same. Yeah, message. I think it must. Yeah, I think it's something that's overriding. Yeah, oh, so good. it's not it's great. not her, it's a note taker. So that's that's great. Sorry, I've just picked up on on that. Yes, I do like keeping busy, Christina. Again, all, things happen for the time of life that you're in. You know, that makes a difference. If I was, when I had children at home, there's no way I could be doing what I'd be doing, but I was still doing a lot. All right, negative things about networking, being too transition uh, transactional, that you only turn, people turn up once and expect to get business and then they complain that they don't get any business. That's not what networking is about. It's about building relationships. Not following up. I I have keep a, a, have created a, a I use a spreadsheet still for this, of every person I've ever connected with. So that when someone says, oh, I need to connect with a LinkedIn expert, I can go, I know someone that I can connect you with. So keeping a way of whatever you follow up or just follow up when somebody wants something or follow up to say, hey, it was great chatting. Thank you. Being inauthentic, that, again, it's... And part of this, and I don't know whether I've got this as a point, is not giving back. It's not contributing because those people start to get noticed as well, the ones that keep taking all the time. But just be you. Not giving value is probably a bit of, a bit of that. There's in, you know, quite a few networking groups I go to. There's people that have expectations that people will uh, give them referrals or information, but then they don't provide the same thing back. Uh, ignoring online networking. So there's lots of opportunities for online networking, and you can do that. You can connect overseas if you're prepared to get up at midnight or 4 a.m., and not following networking etiquette, which is, you know, getting there and throwing out your business cards and expecting um, to get business from it. So making sure that if you are networking, that you're following the rules. The How can you give value? You can give, offer exp expertise and advice. You know, there's one minute business bites. Uh, uh, do exactly that, that I do. They offer advice. You can do blogs and videos and, and webinars like I'm doing, social media, inbox, podcasts. There's a whole lot of things. Don't try and do everything at once. Just pick something that's going to work for you, that people can see that you know what you're talking about. Really, that's the biggest thing that you need to be seen as an expert. Improve customer experience. How can you improve your customer experience and give them extra value in something? And any other benefits that you might be able to offer your, your clients. And again, authenticity. This word comes up all the time. You've got to be you. You've got to be real. And you can't, it, it's not about the sale. I, I've been working in sales. So when I was teaching aerobics, I was in sales because I, instead of getting paid for a class, I used to say, give me a, a a payment for a, a dollar for every person that turned up or whatever it was. I can't remember now. So it's the highest paid person doing aerobic classes because the people would come back to the class. Now I didn't, it wasn't to the, you know, getting people, the, the focus wasn't on the dollars. The focus was on, well, 
ensuring that everyone turned up to that class got exactly what they wanted out of it. So it's the same with your your clients. You, you, I, and I have this thing, you know, 40 years in sales and I've never sold anything to anybody. I just make it really easy for people to buy from me. I've said that more than once and that and that is absolutely true is is that is by give, being authentic and giving value. So how can you do it? Building a tribe of loyal supporters. Now, I, I've put up, this is a friend of mine and a client, a Madonna guy. I think there's a couple of people on here that do definitely know her. Madonna has got 20,000 subscribers to her YouTube channel. And she's also got a podcast channel as well. And we worked on building that for her. She, her videos are okay. They're not professionally done. She's got what nearly 2,000 videos, about the 20,000 subscribers because she engages regularly. She creates exclusive content and she delivers consistent value. But you know what she does as well? She does it. She gets it done. She doesn't have to be perfect. She just gets it done. And that's what I want to encourage you to do. That's where that authenticity or being authentic comes in is just get things done. And how can you build loyal supporters? Because this is this is what you want. Where are we? So so these are some of the five star reviews I've got. You're not going to read them or read all of them all. The point is that that these are people that have been really happy with the service that they've had, but they become loyal supporters and they talk about me. So that's what you want. You want people who are going to talk about you and promote your expertise. That's what all of this brand building is about, is having other people, because that's what a brand is. It's not what you say it is. It's what other people say about you, and particularly when you're not in the room. So how can you do that? How can you build that? Getting reviews and asking for reviews is, is a great way, but that's other. But being out there as Madonna has done with with those YouTube channel, that's how you do it as well. I'm sure every single person on here has expertise in that in their field. So if you're not sharing it, then you are missing out on great opportunity. So any questions after that section at all? questions anything julie smiling get taking notes julie yeah any questions Faisy? Thank no you. beautiful christina all right the fourth one is consistency we're talking about that consistent being as you can see by the networking is pretty consistent the and having a routine of practice that is such an important important thing to be doing and systemize your processes one of the things that i find when people miss out and it's part of this routine practice part is that they constantly are addressing other people's needs before their own and that's a whole nother subject that i work with people on and i know there's other people on here that do exactly that as well but it's making sure that you fill your cup first and then you can help others. And if part of that is you needing to do what you do with your time, then it's it's important to do that. How about all the time take to produce content consistently? It's a job within a job. It's overwhelming. That's part of it. It can be uh, Simona. It definitely, it, and that's where I really want to encourage people not to go, oh, my gosh, it's so much. I have to do all of this. How am I going to do it? Now, I was at a, a networking event the other day. I picked up my phone and, and did a 16-second video of what we were there, instantly sat down and posted it. There's doing things like that helps, but having plans, and this is one of the things I'm working with quite a few people at the moment, and we're setting there social media plans in place and and one of the guys I'm working with just went oh my gosh that just made it was so overwhelming I didn't really understand and what I, I just didn't know what I was going to be doing next and it was he, he just was overwhelmed and I knew he wouldn't do it 
So I, I had to keep pulling it back and go, no, we're doing this on this particular day and this is what we're going to do. You've got that built already or you've got it made already. And that's one of the things you can do as well, uh, Simona, is chunking things. So don't create one blog at a time. Create three blogs. Don't do one video at a time. It, if I do, say, those one-minute business bites, I've just done another 20 of them a couple of weekends ago, and, and this is me being a girl in vain. I wait till it's a hairdresser day. <clears throat> and then I come home and I and I do my videos. That'd be all right, Steve. You get the hair done and it, it, uh, then you'll be Perfect. able to do the, do the videos, right? So, and I just make it on a hairdresser day. I actually block out the time and I create the 20 videos. They take editing after that. But then I've got 20 videos. If I only put one out a week, that's, that's half a year's worth of videos. And it's probably taken me about three hours to do it. Now, it, and, and that's probably with the editing as well. So you're getting six months worth of content that you're not just going to use in one place. I create, each year I, I, I create a, a quote post for every week of the year. So I create 52 of them. The quotes are really easy to find. You get on Canva. And because I travel a lot around Australia, I create these with these backgrounds with Australia, a different scenery each month. Four, there's four or five each month, so they're all the same, and then the next month it changes. Quote, it's, it's a template. It's templated. I just throw in a new quote. So that might take me a couple of, only a couple of hours to do 52 of those. And then I got one quote for the rest of the year. But that and, and knowing then how to know when to post and what to do with them and all that sort of thing, that all comes part of the scheduling. On most of your social media platforms, you've got scheduling capacity now. And there's really cool, so cheap or inexpensive or free software that you can do all that scheduling as well. And that's what I help my clients is find the ways to get the things across. So hopefully that helps a little bit as, as well. It's really look good and feel good image brand might be advice. <laughs> Plan for it. Beautiful. So hopefully that helps a little bit, Simona. It's it's not quite as overwhelming, but it, how do we get this done and how do we chunk it, do it, so that you, you're not spending all your time doing it. And getting a consistent brand, whatever that looks like for you, just across different platforms for me is that consistency of the, the look. And if I change the look, then I change the look across everything. I might do that every every couple of years, but I, you know, stick everything's in my branding colours. It's just that consistency. But people think of consistency, they think of the colours and the brand. I'm talking about consistency as in your message. That's the important factor. How are you being consistent in your message? Uh, putting systems in place. Now, I was challenged with this a couple of years ago. Oh, oh God, I keep saying a couple of years, but then I go back to 2020, so it was before that, so probably about five or six years ago, to create systems. And it, I was told that anything that I did more than once, I needed to have a system for it, and I could either write down the steps or video the steps. So every day for a month, anything that I did more than once, I would take then, sometimes it was 10 minutes, sometimes it was 30 minutes, and write it down or video what I had done. And I focused on all it mostly being across my social media for that particular month. If I do a podcast, you know, there's about 40 steps in the podcast and getting it across into the website, all of this. And it because it, I'm not that, that's not my personality to, to be that detailed Truly, it is not. But I stuck with it for the month. Then a couple of months later, I put on a VA and she said, "What? how do you do this or what? how do you do it? And I went, here we are. And really, I rarely have to, had now, I've had the same VA now for years, so she's great, knows all my stuff. But I did, didn't really have to go keep training her because it was all done. The systems were there. So it is high value to put systems in place. So think about the things that you do more than once and how can you record what that activity is because I guarantee down the track it's going to help you a lot. And now there's so much AI out there that can help you with different components of what, as well. But learning which ones are of value, which ones are just distractions. We've got distractions everywhere. 
And and part of that social media, I know I can get lost down a rabbit hole and 10 minutes later I'm I'm still on social media. Can anyone else do that? Just pop in yes. If you am I, I just want to make sure I'm not the only person. Sometimes it's 20 minutes and I and that 20 minutes could have been spent doing something of value. But I'm here, I am scrolling, and most of the stuff, particularly on Facebook, is just all advertising. It's all sponsored. It's not even real posts with people you know anymore. So making sure, you know, that that time that you've wasted scrolling could be time that you could put something in place. But definitely worthwhile putting systems in place. Loom is a great free video tool. You can screen record things. Yeah, yeah, it is too. You get five videos a month. Scribe into great free online. It's brilliant. Uh, Microsoft has got free video editing. It's fabulous. It's um, I would, was using something for years and years and years. As Camtasia, was it? Years. And then they started they wanted to charge me. So I I discovered the uh, the Microsoft one. And yeah, so those use Apple. There's, pro there's probably one on Apple as well. Uh, um there's there's free things out there and there's free scheduling tools as well as i said so any questions about anything before we move on to this last component at all cool thank you for that advice christina all that information it's all, always of value for people to to test these things out anything that's going to save us time and energy is important so with to get a competitive edge, we have to be continually getting educated, invest in mentors, and become an authority. Uh, part of education is two-way. How can you educate people with your knowledge? And then how can you learn as well? How can you impart your knowledge? And for me, I run workshops, training sessions, a lot of one-on-one -on -one with clients in particular, mentoring. But that's important because every time I educate, or oh, webinars, of course, podcasts, uh, every time I educate somebody, I learn without a doubt. And learning how to deliver it well is so important. When you're setting goals, now this is something that I don't think a lot of people do. One thing is to write down your goals and write them to the formula that I said. This other thing is to figure out out of that goal, what's the missing component? So I always set a personal goal each year. So the personal goal this year was to get my golf handicap to 18. It's not happening, but I've just haven't been playing regularly but I have for the last six weeks and it's I've really been wrapped Is there any golfers on here this, can you just pop in the chat if you're a golfer no golfers no golfers oh, I can't even brag because if you don't not a golfer you can't understand how good the score was anyway I haven't got the handicap to 18 but I it's been improving because I'm playing regularly but how can I get my handicap to 18? Well, I can putt well and I can drive well, but I can't. I was missing shots off the fairway. Uh, love golf, but not a life choice yet. Yeah, I, Julie, I, I'm very blessed. I get to play now. I play once a week at least. So I figured to figure out where am I missing the shots? And I need to arrange lessons for, with a professional on hitting the wood from the fairway. So that that's when you've got a goal. What's the missing factor? If you're not hitting that goal, if you've been doing things the same way you've been doing them all the time, you keep writing these same goals down each each year, but you're not hitting them, what is that missing component that you need to do? So with the golf, that was the, that's the part is the the fairway fairway woods. I can hit my five iron well on a fairway though, but that's I got I can get another thirty meters if I use wood. All right, so then I set a business goal. So I set multiple business and personal goals, but the same example for the goal for the business, it, and this is not how I write them out either. I'm just giving you what the goal is. Improve my web, website SEO to drive more traffic. So what do I need to know and learn to achieve this? So when you're writing your goals, figure out what the missing component is. And so I need to engage an SEO Google expert and participate in training, which is exactly what I've been doing. So the, the 
the traffic that's been driven to my website is is coming from everywhere. It's really unusual um, list of clients. I've got an orthopedic surgeon at the moment. I've got a 10-year-old that I'm teaching a speaking training to, real estate, beauty therapist, hairdresser, like it's diverse. And some are through networking and people I know or people refer, but others have come through only through the website. So that was for me, that was a driving force. So what is it for you? What is the goal that you want to achieve this year? And then what is the missing component and what do you need to do? So if it's building a bigger brand authority, then, you know, that's where you then need to go figure out, well, what have I got to do? And without a doubt, and I'm sure there's people on here that have spent, invested as I have, tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars, in fact, on some of the best coaches and trainers and mentors worldwide. And now I'm able to give that back because, and, and I do it in a way that it's affordable to the people I work with because I am in a position where I can do that. Because I want people to achieve what I say my mission statement was to enable people to do what they didn't think was possible. So that's where I step in with what I, I can do. But whatever you're thinking that those goals are, you need to find people that you can work with that you know have the runs on the board, have the experience and can provide you with the outcomes that you want to achieve because that's what it's all about. It's absolutely about your reputation because that's what we want to be doing. This whole thing is about how people see you and what their perception of you is and what their perception of your brand so that they go, yeah, definitely, that's the expert that I want to be working with. They're the five points. I told you we're going to go through those. I And the, we've worked on clarity, connection, community, consistency, competitive edge. And remember, I, was, I told you I'm not going to be selling you anything. I'm going to talk about uh, something that I want you to do in a moment. So don't race anywhere because what I want you to all do now, if you want a soft copy of pop in there, either being unstoppable or good girls, uh, good girls do sell. Pop, if you all pop in exactly what copy you want, and then I will um, make sure that you receive a soft copy of that. Are there any, before we go on to this, please, Julie doesn't tell me which book. You can have good girls or uh, what did I say? Being unstoppable. Oh, I put good girls. In oh, did you as well? Yes, oh, okay. The police was up there. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So content, everyone's got some value out of that so far. Is that what, what's the biggest learning that you've taken away, take, taken away from this so far? I want you to think about that as to what is your biggest learning. And please open a microphone and, and share that. What is your prize? Thank you, Christina. Setting goals and the pathway to achieve them. Thanks, Steve. It's really clear when you look at it like that, isn't it? It's what is that missing factor? Ah. And, and then you know where to put your energy and, what, and, and where you invest your time and money and energy into it as, as well. Is anyone brave enough to open up their microphone and say, what do I need to achieve the goal? And something. Do you want your prize, brand, value of systems? Yeah. They save time in the long run, Julie. Thank you, everyone, for sharing those. All right. Uh, we talked about all of this right at the beginning. There were some people that are on here that missed the first part of, that, of the value of putting yourself front and centre of your brand. So overcoming that fear of judgment, the time, what you believe is time restraints. We've all got the same amount of time. In a day, it depends on what we had prioritized that uh, in the, for ourselves. The and you know just to be able to be seen as that expert. This is the person I want to work with because they're an expert in this particular field. What makes you stand out? I love this image. I just pop it into so many of my webinars <laughs> because I just think it's so important to recognize that we can continue to do what we're doing and swim around with every other single fish in the bowl or 
we can make changes and we can, whatever those changes means, it means that do I get up at 4 a.m. and start working on things? Is that the change you need to make? It is the change that I need to make sure I'm fit, feeling fit and healthy and I go for a walk? Is the change I need to invest in coaching? Is that the change? Whatever that change is, because we want to be the standout. We want to be successful in what we do so that, you know, for a whole lot of reasons and, and leaving legacies to other people is such an important and such an important space for me to be able to do that. There's a few people that still haven't told me what book they want. You can just pop it in there that I know are on. And uh, send that through to you. And there's a couple on here that didn't come through the normal registration. So if you haven't done that and you haven't received any emails from me or you received a message on LinkedIn, then please pop LinkedIn and then I'll track you down or I will send things that way. I don't want you to miss out. Again, the reading, the writing the books, the purpose behind that was one, here am I, an expert. I've written two books and it's now the opportunity to share that with the world. What I want to show you is a coaching and mentoring programs that I run. And again, a lot of information on these screens. I don't expect you to take all this in at the moment. You'll find on my website as well. But there is all different price points for depending on what sort of service or what you are looking for, how much you want to work with me. If you're thinking, well, I think Janine knows what she's talking about and there's certain aspects of what she's talked about that I need clarity on and, yeah, I'd love a coaching call once a month or however that looks for you. This might be the best way to suit you. It, it depends on, on what you're after. And that's what I work with clients is usually on this monthly basis or they buy so many hours, but it's individually for you as to what you, what will suit you and what you think you want to get out of work, working me, with me, if that's where you want to move forward. So this scan is to book an appointment with me. That's all it is. You get 30 minute free strategy call and it's needs to be done for the month of November. I am heading away overseas for a few weeks, so there's not a lot of spaces to book times. And do not book tomorrow, which I didn't close off tomorrow's calendar. So please don't book Friday, but there's Saturday and then there's time when I come back from holiday. Saturday morning is a great time because we, um, we can discuss what would work for you. So the strategy call is... How can you catch up with hearts? Uh, Simona, if you've dropped your email in there, I will send you a recording on it, seeing that you've made the effort to be here. The so and so scan that, book a strategy call with me, and it's it's no obligation. I just want to see whether I can help you achieve the results that you want. And am I that missing space that's going to set you up to project your personal brand out, get get your clear your story clear? and ensure that you are getting the right message and using your time as effectively as you possibly can. So if so that again, that's the that's one way of working with me and this is what a lot of people find this works really well. It works within their budgets as well without saying, hey, I want you spending $10,000 with me. No, you can either spend $59 a month or what whatever that looks like for you. And if you book a strategy call, so you get you book the 30-minute strategy call, for this particular month, I will do a LinkedIn audit of your profile. Now, Steve here is an amazing LinkedIn expert of, of just about everything else out there on how to build, build your LinkedIn connections and everything. One of the things that I do well is because of the sales background and there's a lot of subconscious NLP stuff that I I understand that comes across in any profile that you set up and, and in LinkedIn, there's a couple of things that people do wrong every time. But it's also about your about and your, your heading because of the sales component and getting the story right. And that's where I help set up that LinkedIn profile. So I will give you a complimentary LinkedIn audit if you book a strategy call. And I will send post a hard copy of one of my books if you book a strategy call. That's all you're going to do, strategy call. Now, I told you I wouldn't be selling anything at the end. I just want you to do that. 
because I really want to understand if I can help you and I truly, and if I can't, I may have someone that I can recommend that can do that for you. But please, that's that's it. That's the box and dice. So has everyone got a copy of that scan? And I could maybe drop it in here as well. Is it drifts off? All right. 